Hi guys, in this video we're going to walk through a way of achieving the cell shading style in our games. Since Unreal uses the deferred rendering pipeline, there isn't a way of easily achieving that without compromising on something. Since for this video series we have been working on asset materials, I'll show you a way to achieve that from here. The base concept is very simple. Given some data of a fake light, we have to calculate a gradient that represents how much every pixel is illuminated. Once we have that, we can remap its values to colorize our geometry. So, let's create our light as first thing. The simplest light type we can start with is the directional light. To do so, we just need to create a normalized vector tree that will identify the direction the light is shining to. Then, to obtain our gradient, we just have to do the dot product between it and the mesh normals. Since the gradient is inverted, we need to multiply the result by minus 1 and saturate it. This is because, since the light vector and the light facing normals are pointing at each other, the result of the dot product is negative. Now, the only thing left is to use this gradient to colorize our mesh. Since the transition between the various shades is generally hard in cell shading, we can use an if statement to blend in the three different colors. Let's add three vector trees and two scalars that we lacked as thresholds. One color will be the key, one the highlight, and one the shade. By using the same logic, but using the camera vector instead of the light one, we can create a sort of outline effect. The foundation of our cell shading can be now considered complete. From here, you can work on it by adding maps, normals, more parameters, if you want to texturize this more. But what should I do now if I wanted to use other light types instead of just the directional? To create a point light, we have to follow a slightly different logic. Since it represents a point that emits light in all directions, we can't use a single direction vector to generate our gradient. We have to compute that for every pixel instead, by using the light and pixel positions. To do that, we have to subtract the light position from the work position and then normalize the result. After that, all the remaining logic is the same. A detail is missing though. 
the point light has a fall off. The more the surface is distant from the light, the weaker the illumination is. To add this feature, we have to use a new radius parameter to generate a second gradient that will be multiplied on the top of the one we already have. This new gradient will store the normalized distance between the light and the surface. To calculate it, we have to divide the distance between the two points by the radius parameter, saturate and flip it. Note that this is a linear falloff. You can change the curve as you prefer, but if you are looking for a physically accurate one, you have to use the inverse squared. The last light type we are going to see in this video is the spotlight. It is basically the combination of both the directional and the point light types. In fact, it behaves exactly as a point light, but it shines its light only in a direction, inside a cone. So, as first thing, we have to reintroduce the direction vector and use it to create a third gradient that limits the emission of light to the area we want. To achieve such thing, we need to calculate the dot product between the spotlight direction and the vector that goes from the light to the surface. Now we have to shrink this value so that the gradient covers just the area described by the angle parameter. Since the dot between two normalized vectors gives us the cosine of the angle between the two, we can take the cosine of the angle parameter and use it to remap the gradient. Let's do that by dividing their flipped values by each other and then flipping again the result. Now we can finally multiply this new gradient on top of the other ones. What we just discussed, besides showing you some fun stuff, should help given you a clue of what's happening under the hood when a real is rendering a scene. There are many more features that we could add, of course. How would you add reflections to make the material shiny? Let me know in the comments and maybe it will be discussed in future videos.